Hi, my name is Rem and welcome back to uploading files with Vue.js and Express series. In this episode, we're going to create a very simple Express web server that will get the file from the user and will save it in its file system. Before we begin, just a quick note that if you don't want to wait for another episode to be published, you can go to the gsfullstack.com and purchase the series as pay what you want model as a way to support my work in this channel. Thanks. Okay, so we're going to create very simple Express web server from scratch. So let's start. So I'm here in my terminal and first thing first, let's create new folder for our API. I will call it upload-api and let's cd into it. Oops, API. Okay, so here I'm just going to init yarn with default options just to have the package.json file. And I also know that for Express, I will need the Express library, so I'm gonna just add Express and also Nodemon. Nodemon will allow me to restart server every time when I change something inside of it. Okay, that's done, so let's open it in the editor and let's create index.js file. So here first, we need to have the Express, so we're gonna import it or require it from Express. And after that, we initialize the app as the instance of Express application. So here is where we're going to define our routes. And at the end, we'll have the app.listen. And we specify port, so let's say 3344, something that is very simple to remember. And here in callback, just the console.log message that we are running on local host 3344. OK, so here we can define our routes. And the first one is that we already used on our client side app is upload. So we'll have request, we have response in the callback function. Cool, so for now, let's just respond successfully with, with JSON with something like cool, yeah. To start server, we want to use Nodemon. So let's go to package.json here and let's create scripts and entry. And here we define the start that will just run nodemon index.js. Cool. So let's go back to terminal and let's run yarn start. Oh, I made a typo. So not script, but scripts, plural. So let's try it again. And here we go. We're running on localhost 3344, but we have a problem. Okay, great. So we have our server and it runs on port 3344. But the problem is that Vue.js application runs on port 8080. And when we make requests from this app, it makes requests to the same port. So we need to set up some kind of a proxy. But how can we do that? Well, it's very simple thanks to Vue CLI. Okay, so we back to the view code and we created the default one, the default project in view CLI, and that's why we do not have any kind of view config. So we need to create it ourselves. So we create in the root folder, we create view.config.js file. And it module exports configuration object. And what we want to specify is dev server, and inside of it, proxy that points to HTTP localhost and the port that we need, 3344. So now if we go back to terminal and we need to restart our server, now when we upload image, we should make request to the upload and get our cool year response. So let's have a look. So I'm gonna choose the file, hit send, and now network returns 200 and here we go. Cool, yeah, so it works. So Express is very simple, very minimalistic and very unopinionated web framework. So even to accept some kind of a JSON request, we need to use middleware like body parser. So to handle multi-part requests, we also need middleware. And we're gonna use multi, multi, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll call it multi middleware. Okay, so we're going back to terminal to the server code. I'm gonna open new tab here, new split, and I'm gonna add multi. Nice, let's go back to editor. And here in our index.js file, we just, we're just going to define everything in one file. 
we're going to request or import multa from multa. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to create this middleware. And we just define, let's say upload equals to multa, and we pass down the configuration object. In our case, we'll just have the destination uploads. So that simply means that now we have the upload middleware that will upload all the files if we have multi-part request in the current folder in uploads folder. Okay, so now we can use it simply by chaining it as the middleware upload. And as we know that we are uploading just one file, we just used single and then the name of the attribute that we upload, we call it file. And this file then comes from our client code right from here. So it depends on what you appended to this form data, that is what we catch in here. So here's what's going on. User uploads, submits form and uploads file to the server. Multi on the server sees that this is the multi-part request. So he chimes in and say, hey, I can handle it. And using the options that you provided to it, it just takes the file, checks it, and then saves it into provided directory. And after that, it creates the metadata file object and append it to the request object. So let's see how it works. So now here in our request object, we have request.file, which will have all the data about the file that has been uploaded. So let's return it in our response here. So we'll have file request.file. So now let's go back to the browser and let's try to upload it. And now you can see this is the object that Malta created. We can see the destination, we can see the file name that Malta assigned to this file. By default, there's just the random string uh, to you know, avoid collisions. We have the MIME type, we have original name and the path and the size. So all the information that we need about the file is here. And if you go back to terminal here and let's ls uploads, you will see that here it is, uploaded file. Nice. Of course, you should be very, very extremely careful with file uploads. You need to authorize user to make sure that user has the rights to upload files. You need to validate file itself, its size, its type, everything that you need. And only after that, you know, allow file to be saved in your system. Otherwise, it could lead to very, very dire consequences. So be careful. Okay, I hope I didn't scare you away. So now when we have uploaded files successfully, we should show user that we actually done something. So let's go back to view application in our form here. And here is in the try block, after we have executed the access post, after it's resolved, if everything went well, we want to have some kind of success uh, message. So let's add this message and we call and we set it to file has been uploaded like this and we set file to empty string so this way when user uploads file we just reset the upload form and we can do it again in error case we'll just use this message and we say something went wrong and also let's introduce the error flag so we'll have error true so by default, it will be false. And if everything went well, if we had error before, we also set it just in case to false. Okay, so we introduced message and error. So let's add them to the data. Message by default empty string and error by default false. Okay. Also, when we select file, we also want to uh, you know reset errors. So we'll set error to false and message to empty string. So this way, when we select new file, we just reset the form completely and we will revalidate it a little bit later. So now we need to display this message. So let's right here at the top of the form, we introduce another div and we'll display it only when we have message. The tricky part is the class. So when we have error, we want to have is danger class. When we do not have error, we want to have is success class. So we'll use optional class here. So the message class 
is a given. But then if we have error, then we append is danger. Otherwise, we append is success. And inside of it, we'll have another div with message body. And we just render message. Okay, so let's go to the browser and let's try to upload new file. And here we go, file has been uploaded and the upload form has been reset. Nice. Great job. So basics of file uploading is already under our belt. The next logical step is to learn how to validate files both on client and on the server. And that's what we're going to do in the next episode. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want to get notified every time when I upload new content, hit the bell icon as well. And if you want to support my work, you can become a patron on the Patreon or just go to the gsfullstacker.com and purchase one of my series that I publish there. Thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next one.